Hello and welcome everyone back to episode 6 of MotoGP 22 career mode. Today we are off to sunny Spain for the Jerez Grand Prix, one of the best tracks in the world and I cannot wait, we're coming in on a high podium in Texas, a race win in Portimao. Let's see, can we keep our podium streak going and a catchy at the end of free practice. So at the end of free practice 3, I've made a bit of a blunder, I'm not going to lie. You can see the times on the right side there, the current times. They were in the session I did, I was P6, but unfortunately in the hotter temperatures, which is a bit unrealistic, they went a lot quicker, which means I'm down all the way down here in P27. You can see I was P6 in FP3 in the cooler conditions. I thought I did enough. I really, I have a lot more pace than that. I just didn't really, I was P6 on a worn set of mediums. I uh, just kind of thought, yeah, that'll be enough. But no, they've been doing 45s in the hot temperature. So again, AI time has been simulated or wrong. But uh, I'm not too worried. I think we should breeze through into Q2. So yeah, just an extra bit of work for myself. And maybe if it goes wrong, we could be at the back of the grid. But let's see. I reckon I have the pace anyway. So here we are into the final corner. We come to start our lap in Q1. Currently, the benchmark is Dennis Anchu, a woman of 47-1. I think I've already gone quicker than that this weekend. I really believe I can go into the 46s. I think I actually have a 47-0. So, shouldn't be too hard to get there. Especially, oh, especially since soft air tire in lower fuel, hotter temperatures seem to be giving more grip on this track, which is actually the opposite of real life. We're just over in sector one. It's a pretty messy sector one as well to be fair. I am running a hard front as well just because I have a limited amount of medium fronts and I will need one for the race. We're half a, or a quarter of a second under as we come into turn six. Danny Pedro's a corner. Next time in the split will be any second now. Three times under, so again, again, of a small bit. Into the final sector we come through Cruvier. Up now to Ferrari. Perfect through there. One corner to go, Jorge Lorenzo. Should be enough. Up to the line we come. Make sure we hit every gear change. Perfect. It's going to be a 46 5. So we're on pole or we're on provisional P1 by 0.6 of a second. I reckon that's enough. I'm going to end the session. Let's hope we've done enough. No! How unlucky have I been this weekend? Oh, I had more time as well. Like that's just annoying. The thing is, if like, the worst part about the career mode and the AI is you can't simulate the lap times. You can't fast forward because they'll put in lap times they can't do. So you you have to guess whether you'll go through or not. So now we're going to be starting P nineteen, I think P eighteen, P nineteen. We're going to be near P twenty. So we've we've work to do tomorrow. We have work to do. So, quick look at my setup before we get in. Again, very minor adjustments to the setup. Very little. Just, again, struggling with a bit of rear end, jumping in the braking zones. We're going to go medium-medium. Um, slightly cooler temperatures. I should be okay with that. That's what I ran on Friday and felt okay like that. So, yeah, I, I really thought we'd be... I feel like I've, it's kind of my own fault that I've underperformed so far this weekend and it's not a pace thing, so I'm still hoping that we will start to make a lot of positions up in this race, but wish me luck. Let's see how it goes. So I don't know if the AI knows something I don't, because a lot of them got hard tires front and rear, but we get a good launch. Really good launch, but we're on the outside for turn one. Just leave the brake off. Trying to go around the outside. 
I'm just searching the inside for two. On the curb, not where you want to be. I kind of negated our bad qualifying. The factor on hard tires that worries me. Do they know something? There's so many of them just on hard hard. Up now behind Danny Halgato. Oh, look at this. What? Are they breaking? What are they doing on the straight? How were you in P3 at the end of lap 1? I'll never know. Just sat. Jamma Messia. My Bernard Hall is going to go around the outside and leave him have it. So how were they going that much quicker than me in qualifying sessions and then breaking pretty much at the middle of the straight? Makes no sense. So, I'm going to just try and bide my time. I reckon it's going to be an easy race if that's what they're going to do. Should have a bit of time in hand, so... Nino, though, is all over my chuff. True Ferrari has a look. I'm going to stay a touch defensive into Lorenzo. Good exit. I wonder will I have a tire advantage, being medium, medium. It doesn't feel like it at the moment. What I worry about is when we get to lap 6, 7 and 8, will the AI have tires that I won't? I believe everyone in front of me has a hard rear on. I might want to get to the front a bit earlier than I thought. Maybe just try and bridge a bit of a gap and see what I can do. Kind of a port to race. Just notice well I am slightly overheating my rear. So maybe I might want to just sit here for now. Uh, lean angle. It is getting quite hot, which is not a good sign. Again, they're breaking very early. I broke. Look how early I broke. And I still managed to pass two of them. Fodge turns it back, and so does Artola, in fairness. Alright, I'm going to try and just carry a lot of corner speed now. High gear, corner speed. Not stress the rear. Temperature will cause it to wear faster. Like, I don't understand how the medium is so bad in a cloudy, overcast condition like this. So Mino looks like he has better pace with me trying to save some tires. I need him have it. Don't really want to fight him now. Yeah, the AI are picking up their pace already, which is concerning. So I think tire conservation is going out the window this lap. Took a good drive though. Mino probably has the hard rear. So on the straight, I just need a couple of longer straights that I can utilize tire cooling. So I'm gonna just square off as many corners as we can. Oh, we're deep in here though. That's gonna be Mino alongside me. Small bit of contact between me and Pope Mino. Oh, and that is the leader into the gravel out of nowhere. Tatsuki Suzuki touches the curb or loses the front somehow, slides his Leopard Honda into the gravel. What are they? How is this still a feature where they lean into each other? And we just outbreak them massively. Let's see, can we get a stop this time? At least on Ortola. We have done. So we're back into P2, or into P2 for the first time. Again. Just being very conscious, oh shit, of my rear tyre. Just trying to sit the bike up as much as I can. I reckon it's all about corner speed and linking one corner to the next. So trying to sit it up in between corners is not really the way to ride this track and you can really see it's penalising my pace. Oh, I kind of wish I went with a hard rear. I actually was considering a soft as well, believe it or not, because I wanted to make a good um, good start at Messia through. 
Oh, and track limit and Maria as well, so. Alright. I know what I have to do. It's gonna push to the front. See, can I get the lead? Burn as much tire as I have to. And then go from there. On the outside. Rossi 09 Catalonia job. Still don't have the move done. We see it. Uh, Manages to hold on. We need to get ahead of Maria. Though. Brazilian is not part of the plan. So, half race distance. The tyre wear isn't bad, but I know if I start pushing it too hard, the temps will get so high it'll just start to eat the tyre. So, as much as I want to push and use it. See, I look to get a poor exit there, and that has slowed up the 2Ds. We're going to pull out the slipstream before they brake check me. How much time am I making to this corner of your lap? It's, it's completely broken. The rest of the track, they're pretty quick as well, which is annoying, because we could have some good battles. But I feel like this win is mine for the taking. I just need to manage my rear tyre. And that should be enough. For now, I'm gonna just seek. I wanna get to the front. If I can get to the front, I should be able to control my pace better. And controlling the pace will control the tire temps. Oh, Artola has a moment. That's a speculative move from the Brazilian. I would look into Crivier. The last sector really affects my rear tire temp. Good exit though, into the slipstream of Ortola. Might try it into turn one. Mino at the fastest lap. Oh, we have the exact same time, me and Mino. <laughs> That's gas. 147, 412. Identical lap times. Baggio with a new fastest lap. So they are much quicker than me. The front guys, we have two laps to go. The Brazilian Maria behind us is causing me some serious bother. He keeps looking to overtake me. I reckon is pushing me a bit harder than I want to be in certain places of the track. Even with them breaking quite early into turn six, they. I don't know what. Is it a rear grip thing? But uh, they just seem quicker than me pretty much everywhere. You know, the tyre conservation is gone, it's just pushed to the end. So it's 1.5 at the moment. Let's see what it is when I get to the braking zone for turn six. Three tenths. Not me enough though to pull three tenths every lap out of there because I only have two left. Down to me and you and Fadja for the win if they keep it rubber side down. They've literally been glued to each other for a few laps now. No John McPhee, someone I haven't seen much in this career mode so far. That would have been a small bit in Qatar. And since then, he's in nowhere. I've been caught from behind, so my podium mightn't be even in guarantee yet. I reckon my medium rear tyre is letting go a small bit. I am going faster, but I'm more on the limit. Mino, another fast enough for him as he takes the lead into turn one. We're a bit timid on the brakes there. Pretty much 1.6 now to the boys in front. Oh, the rear end has just let go into two. Into Michelin. Forget to win, we're battling for P2 or P3. Maybe, I think I shot myself in the foot here, not pushing for the lead earlier. When I decided to go for it, I think it was just too late and I didn't have the tyre. Judging by what the AI have managed to do to me. Looks like it's just John McPhee. So it might be okay, depending on how my rear tyre lets up. Doesn't feel great at lean. 
especially in the right hand corners which is pretty much the last sector is all right after we turn left here in Aspar it's pretty much right all the way to the finish line John is on the outside we're gonna just squeeze him out he leaves the brakes off oh and he's just that was a very weird crash as soon as we touched he went down that's weird and unfortunate because I didn't want that to happen no, we have the Brazilian again on our tail. And he actually might... Oh, he's going to take it from us. He takes us. We cut back. He's a moment. He runs wide. Throws his hand up. Into the final corner. We're going to have to park it. Oh! He had a go. There's like a battle of seven riders for the podium. But we're going to keep our streak going. Across the line we come. That was a difficult, difficult race. Take a look at the final wins it. 46 4 on that last lap. 46 5 for 46 7 for me, so. Not too bad. Who took the fastest lap though? It's going to be a simulated time, like a 45. Yeah, 45 5 from Nepa on the last lap. Okay, it just shows the simulated times are so wrong, so broken. That really affects the career mode. Brilliant result for my championship once again. Let's see what it does to the championship for me. Puts me up to P4, three positions gained, 21 points behind Mino. So almost a race win still behind. But after the opening four races we had, I'm pretty delighted to be three podiums in a row. Next up will be Le Mans, a French track. There could be a chance of rain there. I've yet to ride a Moto 3 bike in the rain, so that would be an interesting one if we did have it. Quick look at the teams. We're in P5, we moved up a few more positions. But overall, pretty decent weekend. Where the third place rider has just joined the others. Perhaps the aim was a victory, but with opponents like that, there really was little that could be done today. Yeah, as Gavin said, the aim was for the victory, but starting all the way back, I really had to push early on to get to where I did. And again, it just... I would I would like to see what I could have done with a hard rear tyre, but it just wasn't really something I was even considering. Like I did say before the race... I was considering it's a bit cooler temperatures. Could we squeeze a soft? But obviously, I'm glad I didn't take that risk. So we do appear to have a new chassis available. So tire reduction. We can't afford that one. So tire consumption reduction. Tire temperature is what I really want. So I'm going to add. We recommend it. Can I add the act? Automatically assign them. That will take two weeks. We, that means the engine one will take seven weeks. So we're gonna to have to put more men back on that. So who's the engine specialist? You brings it up to three weeks. That'll do. I actually did feel slightly underpowered at the rest, which was weird considering how good I felt in Port of Mau. Uh, a bit of a weird one, but not too bad. So we have how many weeks now for that? Three weeks and three weeks. So again, in three weeks' time, we'll have a double upgrade going on the bike. That will be. Mugello, so for Mugello we'll have a new engine, a new frame, that'll be good for Mugello and Catalonia as they are pretty pretty long straights and could do with a bit of power, but for next in Le Mans we have a week off, we have a week to gather ourselves and get back on it, I can imagine weather will play a part in Le Mans, always does, but I'm going to leave it there for today's episode 6 of the MotoGP 22 season, so if you are enjoying it please drop a like down below, it really helps out the channel and uh, subscribe to see more. I shall catch you all in the not so distant future. Thanks once again for watching. And I shall catch you in the next one. Bye bye.